time sometimes. And when it's born out of something that has been anything from a mistake to a, a vicious, vicious attempt, you know, it, 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 it varies in degrees. I'm not saying I know the same. But I, I just, look, I mean... Surprising news has been released. Top analysts are now predicting an economic crash, not since seen since the Great Depression. It would affect millions of Americans. Social security experts are now warning recipients of serious issues that the program is currently facing and how it could affect payments. The youngest members of the baby boomer generation are nearing social security eligibility, while the oldest have been receiving benefits for some time. These monthly payouts are being increasingly crucial for financial well-being. However, recent surveys reveal significant misconceptions about the taxation of the benefits. In a survey by the Nationwide Retirement Institute, over half adults incorrectly agreed with the statement that Social Security benefits are tax-free. Similarly, in a survey of adults nearing retirement age, more than half incorrectly believe that Social Security retirement benefits are subject to income tax, just like withdrawals from the IRA account. While both Social Security benefits and traditional IRA withdrawals can be subject to federal income, the extent differs because according to Motley Fool, each dollar from a traditional IRA is considered taxable income. Whereas Social Security is taxed only when taxpayers surpass economic thresholds. These thresholds are determined by adjusted gross income, non-taxable interest, and one half of Social Security benefits. Overall, only a portion of Social Security benefits is subject to federal taxation, even beyond these thresholds. Initially targeting higher earners, the combined income thresholds have not been adjusted for very long. And now over half of recipients now owe tax on benefits due to annual COLA pushing payouts even higher. These annual extending increase means that retirees currently exempt from taxes benefits might find themselves above the thresholds in the future. Social Security taxation varies across states. Most states do not even tax benefits, and in the 12th of due, states specifically also been approved, so make sure to watch until the end to see how to claim this money. So many Virginia residents can get a check in the mail or money deposited into your bank account if you're eligible for this year's tax rebate. The rebate is part of a bipartisan plan that's passed through the state, and in this year's generally assembled session, the Virginia Department of Taxation website lists more information regarding those rebate payments for eligible taxpayers. So according to the website, not all taxpayers will qualify for this. Officials said that this, if you had a tax liability last year, you can actually receive up to $250 if you filed individually and up to $500 if you filed jointly. Virginia's tax commissioner said the rebates could start to be used and issued for all returns that were filed by September 5th. The plan is to issue 250,000 refunds daily. Over the course of the program, though, is the end of the year. The state expects to issue about 3 million more one-time tax rebates. Officials anticipate sending roughly a million rebates through direct deposit and 1.9 million rebate checks, so this is some good news. And also the application for President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan is expected to go live as soon as this week. Announced in late August, the plan will deliver federal student loan forgiveness to millions of low- and middle-income people. The Congressional Budget Office said in a report released last week that the student loan cancellation could come at a price of $400 billion, but noted that those payments are still very high and uncertain, so the Biden administration argues that the cost can actually be estimated should be viewed over a 30-year time period and to come out with its own analysis just two days later. It said the program will cost an average of $300 billion a year over the next decade and $380 billion over the course of the program, which we don't know how long will last. So individuals who earn less than 125 grand in either 2020 or 2021 and married couples and head of households who made less than 250 grand will see a check of uh, possibly $10,000 for student loan forgiveness. And if a qualifying barber also received a Pell Grant of everybody, the individual is eligible for up to 20 grand of debt forgiveness. Now, the Biden administration is actually facing some legal challenges to the student loan forgiveness policy, and borrowers are still waiting the final details, so things are just moving around. The Department of Education has actually regularly updated the federal student aid website with information on the forgiveness program. Recently, the department confirmed that borrowers will have more than a year to apply. The deadline will be December 2023, and the Biden administration scaled back eligibility for the program last week as it faces mounting legal challenges to that policy. The program will now exclude borrowers whose federal student loans are guaranteed by the government but held by private lenders. The administration has said the change could affect 700,000 people. The Department of Education initially said those loans, many of which were made under the formal Federal Family Education Loan Program and Federal Perkins Loan Program, 
will be eligible for the one-time forgiveness action as long as the borrower consolidated his or her debt into the Federal Direct Loan Program. But the agency has reversed course after Republican states have actually tried to sue. Big announcement from the IRS, taxpayers are eligible to claim an extra relief check this year. $500 checks are being sent out right now to more than a million people. Minnesota frontline workers will receive close to $500 from the state as recognition for the key roles during the crisis. And according to the Minnesota governor, the state began sending payments worth $488 to more than a million people this week. Leaders on both sides of the aisle disagreed over the payment plan, and that's not very good because with Democrats wanting billion dollars to go towards workers and Republicans, only wanting to spend 250 grand, which would give less people and less stimulus checks. Eventually, the governor and state legislators approved a $500 million budget to provide the payments to workers. The leaders originally expected around 670,000 applicants. Because on the way, new payments are being approved, and now lawmakers are in several states and have just announced a brand new plan, and this brand new plan will directly help the low income. Congress is already working on allocating unspent crisis funds towards new relief. And now, Republicans and the White House negotiators agreed to claw back approximately $27 billion in funding to the federal agencies intended to combat the crisis. And pulling back funds that have already been appropriated is what's known as a recession. Based on a document being circulated by the White House to Democrats, these recessions should not be focused on funds that have not been spent by agencies on the respective crisis era programs. But unspent crisis dollars have long been a target for Republicans who questioned the administration's request for more funds. Arguing that nearly $5 trillion spent on crisis relief was excessive and also helped drive inflation. Some of these programs were largely concluded and others will only see partial recessions, while others were taken because there are no immediate demands. Even the White House budget director was a key negotiator on the deal. The appropriators will use some of that money to spread around, how they see fit, and individual line items to bill. In other words, these unused crisis funds will be distributed by Congress during this year in budget process to over the parts of the federal budget, reducing overall government spending. But as recently as late last year, the White House has asked Congress for an additional $10 billion in crisis funds. The money never came through, and now the administration has agreed to give $27 billion back, including a significant portion of what remained in the fund for emergency preparedness and response. States are in the process of allocating money towards new programs. A guaranteed income program in Wisconsin issued its latest payment worth $500. The payments are put forward every single month and a lot of people receive them and receive the money they need. And the program as a whole was, will be the last one for one more year. This first payment was issued in September and the final payment will be sent in August. But even a household of two, for example, can make more than $36,000 and get the payments every single month. Now, some governors are backing a one-time tax rebate to put as much as 800 bucks in the pockets of the American people. And the governor told reporters, a paycheck does not go as far as it did two years ago, and I'm working to give nearly a billion dollars back to the hands of hard-working, tax-paying Alabama residents. But applications for new guaranteed income programs in Massachusetts, for example, opened, with selected participants receiving monthly payments 